Hi everyone. I recorded a video about quarter watt resistors and seeing how much power they could actually take with lots of airflow and underwater. But it wasn't really that interesting, so I'm not going to upload that. But the one really interesting takeaway I thought from recording that was how much difference airflow can actually make to power dissipation of components. So that's sort of what this video is going to be covering, is just showing some of the findings that I made during the recording of that video and just really showing that if you put a fan in your circuit you can make a massive difference to, how, to the power rating of things and you can have, use a significantly smaller heatsink if you've got a lot of airflow over it so it's an interesting thing to consider sometimes so what I want to do here is just show a side-by-side -side comparison between a resistor with no airflow and a lot of power going through it and a resistor with a lot of airflow over just to show the crazy difference that airflow can make so for my airflow I'm using this Sanyo Denki 40mm fan which is from a 1U server it's a counter rotating fan which means there's actually two fans back to back and they're spinning in opposite directions and they've got different blade geometries as well because they're spinning in opposite directions it means some kind of airflowy thing happens and the jet that comes out of it is much more directional than out of a traditional fan I'm going to repeat this quite a few times with airflow and no airflow for different powers to see how much of a difference it makes and hopefully I can make a pretty plot by the end of it. When I was messing around previously I found 5 watts to be a pretty good power for demonstrating the difference between airflow and no airflow. So here's a 75 ohm quarter watt resistor and I'm going to put 5 watts into it. To calculate the voltage required for a specific power I've rearranged the equation P equals V squared over R to give V equals the square root of RP. So that's the square root of 75 because it's 75 ohm resistor times 5 because I want 5 watts and that tells me I need to put in 19.4 volts so I'm going to turn the fan on now ah that's a bit of a problem isn't it let me find something to secure it down there we go nothing but quality here at the electric labs let's try that again This tiny fan uses 12 watts. It's insane. Now I'm going to turn the resistor on. 3, 2, 1, now. go. Right, well it's been 30 minutes and it doesn't look like very much is going to happen, so let's turn the fan off. And now you're really going to see how much difference the fan makes. There you go, smoking already. This is why if you do have airflow cooling your circuit, it's quite important to make sure that the airflow doesn't stop. There we go. One thing I think is maybe worth mentioning while I'm setting up the next resistor is that although a lot of the time this is a great solution to things overheating, it's not always the best option because this fan is using more than twice the amount of power that's going through this resistor, so to cool 5 watts of dissipation I'm using 12 watts, which sometimes is good, but a lot of the time in lower power circuits you'd be better off just using a 5 watt resistor because that would still be a lot smaller than this fan as well. So now I'm going to go through a whole load of different powers, see how long they take to blow up, and I will be back once I've made a nice plot. Now unfortunately, that plot looked absolutely terrible. But don't worry, I'm not going to end the video here. What I'm going to show you now is a side-by-side -side of the nine most interesting powers that I ran the resistor at. Hope you enjoy.
Oh, look at this resistor graveyard. They got what they deserved for not being E3 values, I guess. So I think the final thing I'm going to do now is record you guys some nice ASMR resistor sizzling underwater. Hopefully you like it.